Aujourd'hui, uh, je vais parler de uh, the very curious, unique American stance that everyone must be allowed to own a gun. And that any kind of control in that idea is tantamount to blasphemy, right? Just gonna give some common sense food for thought on why guns simply aren't much of a solution to uh, any problem, okay? Hey, I'm Zumpik here. Another week and yet another school shooting. As more news comes out about that, uh, I, I, honestly, I just get depressed. Don't we all, right? I mean, seriously. How many more kids have to be shot, right? Before Americans wake up that just because there's an amendment that says, uh, hey, we can have guns, doesn't mean the politicians should be incapable of making actual changes on this issue. Remember, it was an amendment that even added this right to begin with, and an amendment is an addition or change, right? So if rules can be added to or changed, then surely it can be added to or changed again, right? Now, one fact that I have to get out of the way is that I personally, I like guns, okay? As a concept, as a treasure, as something special, as an item of sophistication and a reminder of human ingenuity, I don't object to it simply because it does violence, okay? Violence, frankly, is an incredibly human trait, and that's cool with me. However, that doesn't mean that I think uh, uh, it's not silly that in parts of the country it's easier to get a gun than to rent a car, okay? I'm not even saying that nobody should ever own a gun, right? Maybe just not guns designed to shoot at people, though. After all, I live in the richest country in the world, and I like to think that my safety is not predicated on my ability to have to defend myself personally. Oh lord, though, no. isn't that why I pay taxes? Isn't that why human beings banded together to form communities to begin with? Shared safety? Also, I want to mention I am no policy wonk either, so, you know, I can't offer anything but common sense arguments to remind myself it doesn't have to be this way, right? So let's counter some often stated silliness that the NRA throw out constantly that are completely absurd when you talk about it, or really think about it, right? Now I'd be fascinated to hear anybody who actually disagrees with my series of rebuttals. So let me know if you think what I consider common sense to be, you know, nonsense. Open to different opinions I am, at least, okay? Point number one, that guns don't people uh, don't kill people and people do, right? Well, technically a true statement, but missing the spirit of what's happening uh, these days entirely, okay? Sure, guns by themselves do not kill anything, right? But it sure makes killing and maiming much, much easier. I mean, look, there's absolutely crazy people in every corner of the planet. Heck, I've read news about how some crazy dude was running around with a sword slashing at people in one of those East Asian countries, right? So I can definitely see it. The difference is that the level of efficiency or damage that a crazy person can actually inflict, right? Say, with a sword or a knife, compared to a gun. I mean, do you know how much work it is to maim or kill a handful of people with a melee weapon? It just takes much, much, much more work. And frankly, if you had a pot lid and two working feet, you'd have a fairly chance of surviving the encounter as a victim, right? But if the other guy has an automatic rifle, yeah, no, we'd all be SOL, right? Can we at least make the crazy people work for it if they want to inflict massive damage in the rampages? I mean, if I read in the paper some crazy person sniped off a dozen people with a longbow, at the very least I'd think, wow, this is a crazy patient person to have trained his entire life for this mission, right? Except that, of course, none of the crazy people involved in mass shootings would have ever cleared this bar of patients. So yeah, no. Guns don't pe kill people, but they sure makes it a lot easier to kill a lot more people than cruder, older weapons of yours. Ah, number two, the NRA says the best defense against a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. Um, what? I'm astounded that the NRA has said this, right? That to protect our schools and public spaces, we just need more good guys around with more guns. So let's imagine a scenario where a bad guy has started shooting in a public sphere, say, like a mall, right? And if this happened in one of the more rural states, that's, uh, there's probably a chance that somebody who's not a crazy a-hole may be carrying nearby, right? So here we're, we're making several underlying assumptions, right? That the good guy is a well-practiced sniper of sorts, at least by his own estimation. That the good guy is of a heroic quality, that risking his life is really at the top of his mind rather than simply going home and protecting his own family. 
Hey, we do love our Westerns in this country, so I'll assume both of these first qualities that I mentioned are fulfilled, right? Because we'd all like to think of ourselves as heroic, don't we? But in this scenario, let's say one or possibly more bad guys are already shooting, and let's imagine we have a few good guys with guns also around who may be exchanging fire, and let's say there's one more good guy that comes in, right? Because usually there's more good guys than bad guys, right? How exactly would the new good guy know which one of the shooters, the many shooters on scene, is a good or a bad guy? I mean, in real life, do bad guys wear black hats and good guys white? So this final assumption here really boils down to that somehow all of the good guys are also expected to be Batman levels of detective as well as a good marksman and heroically inclined. Jesus. Does the NRA think that the world operates like an action movie? To be frank, when I really think about it, if I was shown a massive shootout scene in any recent action movie without any context, right, just dropped into the shooting scene, it would be kind of hard to tell who the good guys are versus the bad guys, even in a movie setting, right? So I can't imagine how simply having more shooters in a crowded public space would ever be a great solution to uh, any of these scenarios. I mean, am I totally off my rockers? Are average Americans or even NRA members just basically all gun-toting John McClane's? Really? Ugh. Ah, point number three. Finally, the argument goes, oh, but guns are guaranteed to protect against, you know, the threat of tyranny. Okay, maybe when the average uh, person and the average soldier both only had access to muskets, this was true. But time has, that time has long, long passed, right? I don't know who people who think that their local militias can do in this day and age, right? But it's not really ever gonna amount to any real resistance against the state as it currently exists, right? If the US government wants to come into your house by force, it's gonna be able to absolutely do that. Look at the recent examples, right? The US government has gone into entire other people's countries without permission, right? Plenty of times. You think even the most devout of gun owners with their uh, puny basement stashes full of guns and ammo can keep the feds out? I mean, I guess gun nuts can take a few uh, uh, feds with them uh, as they go down in flames, but this isn't a really viable long-term strategy for resistance, is it? The US government has way, way, way more weapons than any single person or even militia group can ever have, right? So the government is not literally knocking your doors down. It is generally because we'd like to believe our government cares for our own citizens, right? Not because it cannot literally raise your estate into the ground in no time flat, right? What a person has, which is like a semi-automatic assault rifle at best, is a pea shooter compared to the apparatus of the sole remaining superpower in the world. Everybody does know that, right? So either legislate that everybody should be allowed to have tanks and cruise missiles in your backyard, or shut it on the guns bit, because just having personal arms will not keep the government out. God. In conclusion, right, I also wanted to appeal to Americans' pride because I know as an American I am very proud, usually of my country. I think it's the best, except on healthcare and this gun control issue, honestly. Did you guys know that people in many parts of the third world think that America is very dangerous, perhaps even too dangerous for their children to go to? You know, university too, because of all these school shootings that's constantly happening and in the news. Yeah, that's right. You know how weird it is to hear from countries well known for their drug lords to call the USA too dangerous for their children? So USA, USA, we are number one at killing off our own children due to our inability to simply limit the purchase of literal tools designed to inflict death at a massive scale. Why even be the best or richest country in the world if we can't even guarantee personal safety? I mean, I think I'm probably sneaky, sneaky enough to heroically roll out of the way in a bullet storm, obviously. But should we be teaching children this skill just because they live here? Richest and greatest country in the world? If that's not an absurd proposition, frankly, I don't know what is. Cheers. I'll approach it.